Good evening, fifth graders. Tonight we're going to be tackling a little more leave add change. Before we get going with um, adding and subtracting positive and negative digits, we're going to be working with some fractions. A little review because we're going to be coming back to fractions here in the near future. So let's take a look here. I'm going to be changing a fraction into a decimal and to a percent. First off here, we have three tenths. This one's pretty easy for me because it's already, remember, I've been working with the hearts, right? Ten. 100 and 1,000. We want to try and always put that denominator, I should put the 1,000, always put that denominator into a 10, 100, or 1,000. So this first one, we have 3 tenths. That's written as easy, 0.3. If I'm putting something into a percent, I have to have two digits after the decimal. This is 30%. Four fifths, I'm going to change this into something with a 10, times 2, times 2, is 8 tenths. It's written 0.8. It's not 8%, it is 80%. Three-fourths. I can't put 4 into 10, but I can put 4 into 100 times 25. 3 times 25 is also as 3 quarters equals 75 cents. 75 hundredths, that's how it is as a decimal, 75%. Now, as we look over at this other column here, we have 3 eighths. 8 can't go into 10, 8 can't go into 100, 8 can't go into 1,000. So in this situation here, I've been teaching you how to remember what 1 eighth equal. 1 eighth equals 0.125. Okay? Remember that. So what would be 3 eighths? 3 eighths, so I'm just going to kind of show you here, would be 1.25 times 3, which would give you 0.375, which we'd be putting it as 37.5%. Two-thirds, I've been teaching this for a long time now, one-third equals 0.333 continuous, which would look a lot like 33.3%. So I'm going to have to multiply that by two kids to get two-thirds, which would give me an answer of 0.6 continuous, or 66.6%. One-eighth, this one's written, it, it is done pretty easily because one-eighth equals... Um, 0.125, which would be 12.5%. Let's continue down a little lower on this page here. Um, 47 over 50. We can put this one into 10, 100, or 1,000. We're going to convert this into 100. Go in times 2, times 2. 47 times 2 would give me an answer of 94, which is 0.94, or 94%. 6 over 25, we can move this one into 10, 100, or 1,000. I'm going to change colors here. 25 goes into 100. We're going times 4. Times 4 gives me 24, which would be 0.24, which would be 24%. Last one here, 20 goes into 100. We're going times 5. Times 5 gives me 35. 0.35, which is 35%. Make sure you know how to change a fraction into a decimal into a percent. These videos are made to help you. If you need to rewatch this portion of the video several times tonight, please do that. But this is some basic, basic math that you're going to be seeing for the rest of your life. So continue to watch this, okay? Now let's take a look at some of this other stuff here. We're going to be doing some leave. Some add and some changing. This only works in subtraction. Keep that in mind. So this very first problem, we always know that 9 minus 6 equals 3. Let's look at the leave add change concept. I'm going to leave my positive 9 alone. I'm going to change subtraction to adding. And then that means I have to change my last one to a negative. So if I have nine positives and six negatives, that means when I cross off the six negatives, I'm left with three positives left over. Since this isn't subtraction, I can just add nine plus six is 15. Negative nine plus six, since it's adding, we don't have to do leave add change, so keep that in mind. Negative six and six would give me a negative 3, because my bigger number is a negative, so my answer has to be in the negative, okay? Negative 9 minus 6. 
leave add change. I'm going to keep my negative 9. I'm going to change my subtraction to adding. I'm going to change this positive 6 to a negative. Now take a look. I have a negative 9 plus a negative 6. So negative and a negative makes a big negative number, which would be a negative 15. Look down here. Since I'm adding, I don't have to do leave add change. Negative 9 plus a negative 6 gives me a negative 15. Leave add change. Leave add change. Once again. I've taught you this several times now. Every time you see a double negative, boom, make them both positive. I have a negative 9 and a positive 6, which is a lot like this problem right here. And my answer is a negative 3. Keep these things in mind. It's amazing what, we, what a negative and a positive number can do with a 9 and a 6. All right, kids? Be paying attention to leave add change. It will help you out. Let's take a look at some more things here. We just went over that. Insert parentheses. You're going to need to know how to do this. There's a nice portion on your assessment coming up here. So let's take a look here. Whatever you put in the parentheses has to be done first. Okay. Order of operations, parentheses is done first. So let's take a look at this first problem. So there's six problems up here. If you want to pause it right now and figure out these six problems, that would be excellent. If you want to follow along with me each problem, that would be excellent as well. So let's pay attention here. 3 plus 7 times 5. I have to get to the number 38. Where am I going to put my parentheses? So when I see a 3, a 7, and a 5, i got to think. i got to get to a big number like 38. So I might have to multiply. I go 7 times 5 here, kids. That would give me 35, right? Which then I could add to this 3, which would give me 38. That's where you would insert the parentheses on this problem. Let's look at this next problem here. I have to get to a positive 4. Let's see here. So if I did 3... Negative 2 plus 3 would give me a positive 1 times 4. Would that work? Sure would work. So let's put these in parentheses. Because a negative 2 plus a positive 3 would give me a positive 1, right? Because a negative number, positive number. I have more positives. I would cross off these negative 2s, which would leave me with a positive 1. That's where the parentheses would go there, because then it would be 1 times 4, which equal 4. Okay. Let's look at this next problem. This next problem, you're going to have to go double parentheses. This one might be a little more challenging, so remember the double parentheses. I'm going to put my 2 minus minus 6 in parentheses first. Because when I do that, my two negatives, if I do my leave add change, my two negatives equals positives. So this right here would equal 8. So it would be 2, positive, positive, 8. Then I'd have to multiply it by this 5. You see how I just did that? So now I'm going to have an 8 times a 5, kids, which would give me a 40. Then I'd be adding this 3 here, which would give me a positive 37. That one's a little more tricky, but you can figure this out. We're going to be doing a lot of practice with this. We have been doing a ton. So let's just continue to watch here. Negative 5 plus 20 divided by 5. I have to get to a negative 1. So that means I have to break that 20 down pretty small in order to get to a negative 1. What if I did 20 divided by 5? That would give me 4. I would have a negative 5 plus a 4. My positive 4 would take 4 negatives away, which would leave me with 1 negative. This next problem, I have to get to a 10. I have a negative 2, a 3, and a 4. So to get to a 10, I have to get to a pretty big number. What if I did 3 times 4 and got 12? 12 plus this negative 2 would give me a positive 10. This next problem is pretty challenging. It's pretty similar to this problem. You're going to have to be working with some negative numbers and some positive numbers. We have to get to the number 20. We do know when we go 4 times 4, we're going to get 16. So in my mind, I have to be thinking here, okay, what number plus 16 can get me to 20? That number is 4. So can I get to 4 with these numbers right here? That's how you problem solve these kids. And that's one skill we've been working pretty closely on is problem solving. What if I took my negative 3 minus minus 5? What would I get here? 
negative 3, minus, minus 5. Leave add change. I'm going to leave my negative 3, double negatives, boom. That would give me an answer of a positive 2. If I have a positive 2 here, then I can multiply it by 2. That would get me to 4, wouldn't it, kids? So i got to get some more parentheses in here. I'm going to put these in parentheses as well. That's how you do this problem. Because if I have a 16 out here, right, whatever gets done in these parentheses here would give me um, a 2. Then I'd multiply by a 2. Okay. So then I have 16 plus 4, which equals 20. Really take your time tonight when you're watching this video because this lesson is really going to help you um, understand some of these more difficult parts of Unit 7. Please take your time. Rewatch some certain parts. Take a look at these bottom two um, insert parentheses problems because they tend to be the most challenging for kids so, to work with. But they're actually kind of fun too because you're kind of problem solving to try and get to that solution at the end. Hopefully this helped kids. I look forward to um, working on some of these problem solving strategies with you in class tomorrow.